Hey guys, it's Skype here from YCG, your casual gamer. So today we'll be building our very first camera shake together. I'm going to go through all these settings with you guys over here on the oscillation and the camera shake. And we're going to add it to the button over here. So whenever I click on the button, uh, the program is going to run. This is our live system that we made on our last episode. But what is going to matter is only this over here. So when I click, the Get Player controller is going to call our camera shake so that whenever we click on the take damage the scream shake to give a feedback to the player for taking damage so stay tuned all right so the first thing we're going to do is a blueprint class and let's get our shake inside the all class camera shake and select and let's call it shake dash one save everything and let's get inside right away it's going to be prompt with the event graph and we don't want that because everything is in the details panel over here it's a mostly data uh, blueprint the camera shake so let's exit this and then reopen it and when you do so it's going to bring it's going to close the blueprint and it's going to only leave the details panel which this is what we need now inside this episode I'm going to talk about the single instance camera shake and then the oscillation everything that you see over here but I'm not going to go to the anim shake with you guys but I'm going to leave you in the comments below a link if you guys want to learn it. Now, uh, before we get started, inside the user interface, I created a button, like I was saying, that when you click on it, so in event, on click, I moved away the, uh, the program we did last time. I didn't delete it. And what's going to happen is we're going to get the player controller, because this is where the uh, shake is going to happen. And from the return value, we're going to get play shake. You see over here we have the stop camera shake over here. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this too. So from the shake class, we're going to go get our shake one. And as you see, there's a default uh, camera shake from Unreal, but it has no values to it. So even if you put it up and you go inside your scene, as we put our shake right now, if I go inside my scene and I click on the take damage, nothing is going to happen. There is no default setting to the camera shake. Keep that in mind. Now let's start over here with the single instance. So the single instance is going to be a way to create your instance only once. So let's say over here I have a bunch of random offset and you're going to understand what I mean by offset in a second. It's let's say I would have between 0 and 50 for the pitch axis on my uh, rotation. So let's put this a little lower over here. So I have over here my cube that I brought inside my scene. So rolling on the uh, pitch axis, which is the Y, would be this one over here. So if I put 50 and I leave my uh, random offset to random, if, it, if I run the single instance and I, and I uh, check this, when I'm going to start, it's going to, let's say it's going to choose a, val a random value inside this range over here. And it's going to always repeat the same motion. Let's say it's going to choose an, a an angle of minus 35. It's always going to start from there. And whenever I replay the shake, it's always going to start from the single instance. But if I put, if I leave it on check, then it's always going to find a new value to start with. Maybe it's going to be 40, maybe it's going to be 30, maybe it's going to be 45. This is what the single instance means. But if you're using the offset to 0, which is always going to be the same, it's always going to start at 0, then regardless, you don't need the single instance because it's always going to happen the same way anyways. But for our uh, animation, we're going to leave it on check because for my shake, I want it to happen real fast and real small. Now let's create something really easy over here. So you have the oscillation duration. You can put a minus value over here. If you do so, it's going to become an indefinite loop. So it's never going to stop. So if I put minus 1 and I put my oscillation frequency to 1 over here like this and I compile and save. Make sure to always compile and save or else it's not going to apply to your scene. And inside my scene, I'm going to Alt P to get inside. And when I click, it's just going to keep going. And it's not going to stop because I set it to minus 1. Mind you, it's not really fast because the frequency is very low. The frequency is going to be in charge of how fast, how fast the frequency go. 
So I, I want to get to 50 up at a random offset, random offset. Let's keep this to zero just to show you the difference. If I jump back inside my scene and I go out P with a zero offset, it's always going to start from where the camera is looking at the moment. So right now I'm looking this direction. If I click, it's going to start going up and then it's going to go down and it's going to keep going like this, but it's always going to start from the center from where I was. But if I put this random offset and I go compile and save inside the scene, you're going to see that it's going to oh, see it jag down and then it started. Then it jags somewhere else, jags somewhere else, and then it starts. But it's never going to stop because it's on random. It's on loop over here. That's a, that's going to be good if you create a shake like a earthquake, and uh, you don't want it to stop till you use the stop camera shake node. So that would be good for that if you want to put a uh, indefinite loop. But for R, it's going to be an instant, and you want it to stop. So it's going to be a very short value. It's going to be like 0 0.25 because you're getting hit and then it goes away instantly, almost instantly, because you feel the impact and then it stops. So that's for that. The blend in time and then blend out time is how much time do you want to uh, assi assign to the smoothness of the transition. When the camera starts, when the camera shake starts, this is the blend in time. So if let's say I had four seconds and I wanted one second to be to be entirely up to the smooth beginning I would set this to one for my motion over here is going to be so quick that I I just put a value because I don't want it to be too uh, too jagged I want it to feel like you got hit a little bit so I leave half, half of a 0 0.1 of a second just to that motion to be smooth and 0 0.2 at the end But really, for my hit, I could have left them to zero. It's not really important. Now, over here, the amplitude. So now I explain to you what the amplitude, the frequency, and the initial offset does. And it's going to repeat for each axis. Now you have over here the yaw axis, which when I'm on the yaw axis, which is the z axis, when I rotate to left or right. Then you have the roll, which is the other red angle over here, left and right and the frequency is going to happen and you can play with all these settings to make your uh, uh, shake after but I'm going to keep going to the location the location really like you see over here it's the same thing amplitude frequency and offset so again the same thing if I decide a random offset then it means that if I set a value of 5 then between 5 and 5 and minus 5 it's always going to go is it going to be 5 or minus 5? So when you set up a value inside the shake, it's always going to go plus and minus, or minus and plus. So if I put minus 50 over here, then it's going to go minus 50, and then it's going to go f plus 50. And then it's going to keep going this, this motion till the duration finishes. So this is a small uh, value over here. So it's going to be really fast. So you have to put a lot of frequency for it to actually show something. And the same thing for the Y, you have the Y to this side and the Z up and down. Now let's create our animation, our shake, and then I'm going to talk to you about the, well actually I'm going to talk to you about the oscillation right away. The, uh, the FOV is going to be the field of view. So if, when, you, when you put a value in here, let's put everything to zero, just so we can see. When you put a value in the, the, FO, the field of view, if I put 50 over here and I put it to set it to 1 and let's put this to a 0 because I don't want it to be a random offset over here again the random offset is going to be the same over here but you're going to see when I jump inside the game that it's going to do nothing why is that? Oh, because I set the duration too, too, too short like this and there you go because the frequency was so low and the duration was so uh, so small it wouldn't show the effect but you see what it does let's remove this it really does this uh, warp in effect you see so this is what you would use the field of view for maybe a uh, when you're running inside a portal and then it warps in warps out or maybe when you're zooming in with a sniper and you want to see close uh, make the player feel like he's seeing closer further away well that would be probably something 
to keep in mind for the field of view but not for the shake probably now let's put this to zero and let's create our shake so you have for me I want it to be 0 0.25 so when you get hit it's going to be an instant instance that happens really fast for the pitch I put the amplitude to 5 and minus 5 so 5 plus minus 5 and I'm going to put the frequency to 50 so it's going to happen a lot keep the random offset in the yaw I did the same thing 5 and 50 then again you guys can choose whatever you want at this point but this is what I create uh, I, f I tested a bunch of uh, measures and this is what I got that would work really well for my scene. Roll, I leave it at zero. For the location, I just choose the amplitude. I put it to 100 and I put the frequency to 10. Now compile and save and you are done with the shake. So let's get back inside our scene, save all and play. So when you get hit, it shakes the screen. And if if you want to associate it with damage, you're going to see that it happens accordingly. You can go inside the user interface if you've been following the videos and just connect the program over here that we did in the last episode. Compile and save, go back and play, and you're going to see when you take damage, boom, it shakes, and there you go. You feel, you give a feedback to the player for damage. Hope you enjoyed this and the next episode we're going to be building our first trap and I wanted to do a camera shake first because when we get hit by the trap I want the camera shake to happen and now you know how to create one. So have a good day and see you next time.